Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Alumide Makoli. On today's program, more congratulatory messages for the governor elect of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki. Senate Committee on Niger Delta investigates abandoned projects in the region. And the UK pledges to support Nigeria as efforts continue to diversify the economy. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin in the South-South where Governor Adams Oshomale of Edo State has congratulated candidates from other political parties in the just concluded Edo 2016 governorship election for their valiant efforts in the polls. Mr. Oshomale stated this amid celebrations of your Progressives Congress APC victory in the governorship election at the government house in Benin City, the Edo State capital. Mr. Godwin Obaseki of the APC was on Thursday declared winner of the September 28, 2016 Edo governorship election. In Louis Hase Obaseki of APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law, scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. The returning officer for the 2016 governorship election in Edo State, Professor Kayo Deshiramekung, announcing Godwin Obaseki of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as winner. The chairing news was greeted with jubilation at the government house in Benin City, the Edo State capital. Governor Adam Sushumale said the result of the governorship poll is clear evidence that the APC has done a lot to develop Edo State. I am humbled by this outcome. I am excited. My bond with the Edo people is reinforced. And I pray to God Almighty that he will guide the governor-elect to recognize that to whom much is given, much is expected. Edo people, in spite of the current economic challenges, have reposed confidence in him. He now had the huge obligation of servicing this trust that the people of Edo State have invested in him. Governor Shomale was also full of praises for the other candidates in the election. I also want to congratulate Mr. Eze Yamu for his courage in standing up to contest this election. I think it takes a lot of courage to do what he did. And I appreciate all the other candidates who contested but like I've always said, if 10 AJs are on parade seeking for one mandate, only one AJ will win. On this occasion, we had several candidates on parade. God, using other people, had chosen God win. The victory lap was then taken through some streets in Benin City as Governor Adam Sushomale and his wife led the All Progressives Congress faithful to celebrate their triumph in the Edo 2016 governorship election. Meanwhile, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Yakubu Dogara, has also congratulated the All Progressives Congress APC candidate in the Edo State governorship election campaign, Godwin Obasaki, on his victory at the polls. In a statement released today, the speaker said the Edo State governorship was not won just by the APC and Obaseki alone, but by the people. The conduct of the people of Edo State during the election is commendable, as reports have shown that the election was peaceful and no life was lost nor violence reported. The rest of the country will do well to emulate the people of Edo State subsequently. He added the APC victory in Edo State is a challenge for politicians and leaders that the Nigerian voting population is now more aware of the fact that delivering the dividends of democracy to those we lead guarantees that our party will always be favored. End of quote. And staying with the Edo State governorship polls now, and the national chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APCA, Dr. Victor Ike Oye, has rejected the outcome of the election. A statement issued by him describes the way his party was treated as contemptuous, callous, and malicious. 
He alleges that the 876 votes allotted by his party was deliberately done to humiliate and intimidate the party. The APCA chairman is asking INEC to produce the results collated at each polling unit and get a forensics expert to examine each of them. Away from the Edo State governorship elections now, and the police, in partnership with other security agencies, will continue to work with community leaders to stem the tide of crime in River State and the South South. This was according to the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 6, AID Abubakar Marafa, during a security stakeholders meeting in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Ereye, reports. <laughs> It's a meeting of security agencies, traditional and religious leaders, government officials and other concerned groups at the police officers' mess in Port Harcourt, River State. Top on the agenda is the need to close ranks with all concerned in the fight against crime. Experience has shown that better results are achieved when there is synergy between the police, the other security agencies, the public, as well as other institutions of the state. Various speakers prefer solutions to the problems that criminality presents. The problem we have is not that we don't know the criminals. We, we know most of them. In fact, our security people can testify that most of these boys are known to them. But the fear of arresting them I don't know where it should be. So as traditional rulers, I find it difficult to use my office stick to surrender somebody who has a weapon that is even intimidating the members of the house. I want to appeal to the AIG with all due respect to use your authority to ask the federal government. Any community driving for chimpanzee, the two of the kings should be suspended out of the states. In the end, Everyone appears to be on the same page, that all ants must be on deck in the fight against crime and criminality. Emmanuel Irei, Channel's Television News. Meanwhile, the Nigerian police say they're restructuring the pension system to ensure that officers and men of the Nigerian police force are adequately catered for while in service as well as out of service. The chairman of the Nigerian Police Pension Office, former Inspector General of Police Mohamed Abubakar, says separating the pension funds of the force from other collectors will ensure that the police get at least 25% of their retirement funds when they leave service. Meanwhile, the managing director of the pension office, Hamza Boki, believes that police officers were not properly enrolled in the past, but that is about to change. An officer who is retired or will be retired will be well taken care of, unlike before. And uh, it gives him an opportunity to know what contribution he made. And on a monthly basis, he gets a report of what contribution he made and statements of what he has as an officer that he has contributed. And uh, I think it's a good thing. And uh, there are other benefits, other benefits that has to do with uh, ensuring that, you know, when you leave service, before the initial challenges you get is getting your pension paid. We have put a plan that uh, they could get uh, a percentage of, of 25 of that pension immediately taken care of by the pension administration. As at January 1, 2015, we had a net asset value of 1.1 billion Nara as assets under management. By the close of the year, on December 31st, 2015, we had 207 billion Nara assets under management. So when I say that we have transferred 70%, that is what I'm saying. Uh, you see, we have uh, about 330,000 to 340,000 police officers nationwide that are to transfer their retirement savings accounts to NPF pensions.